ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Freedom Report podcast. I'm your host, Austin Peterson, and today's show features a special guest. She's the science babe, and she's speaking out to debunk pseudoscience, flim-flam, hoo-ha, and plain old BS. She's got a bachelor's in chemistry and a master's in forensic science. She's been a chemistry professor, explosives chemist, toxicology chemist, ooh, and now an analytical chemist at a pesticide company. Uh-oh. I think all the people are going to be knowing what side you're on. You're going to be shilling for Monsanto, huh, Yvette? It's, I, I don't work for Monsanto. I'm not going to say which company I work at. Let's keep that out of there. But <laughs> it's, I am on the side of, uh, of pesticides because let's, let's admit it, pesticides give us food. All right, all right. Well, we'll get into that. So w- welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. So you're the food babe online. You're sort of like the the uh, antithesis. Uh, you, or you're not the food babe. You're the science babe. Yes. You're the, you're the, you're the antithesis of the uh, food babe. And so what, what's all about? What, what's the science babe all about? Oh, the science babe, well, I started it because I, I, I like to joke that I, I started the site um, after she took a swipe at my pumpkin spice lattes. Um, oh, because- yeah. It, then it got personal mm-hmm. um, because it's her her whole campaign um, because you know I, I looked at what she was doing and I I understand you know it's it's a, she's using the free market to peddle what she does um, because she's uh, because she goes after things and says look it has this ingredient that I can't pronounce so you shouldn't eat it um, but you know what you can't pr- when you look at um, at the long names the full names for certain vitamins they're really hard to pronounce too. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's not necessarily a reason why you shouldn't eat something. But then she took a swipe at my pumpkin spice latte, so I was a little annoyed. <laughs> I shouldn't uh, shouldn't drink it. Now we all know that pumpkin spice lattes aren't what you should be, you know, basing your diet on. Um, and I actually I had a doctor's appointment yesterday, and I told my doctor about this, and she said, "Oh, they're so good, but you shouldn't have them more than twice a season. <laughs> they're not uh, they're not a source of vitamin C." Right. Um, but there, um, the ingredient in them that she said was um, a cancer-causing chemical um, was caramel color uh, level four. I uh, know, and ooh, that sounds very you know sciency. It's it's caramel color level four. That's the worst level. Um, and it's <laughs> <laughs> well, no, why is that bad? And it, she said it was in carcinogen class level two B. Now, if somebody hasn't done their research, they hear carcinogen and that's bad. No, nobody wants to hear that there's a carcinogen in their food, myself included. I I eat the food. I I want it to be safe. Now, when a new product, anything that's that comes out of a laboratory goes into the food supply, um, the FDA needs to investigate. They need to hear um, what's the potential for harm. Now, everything goes into a, a classification. Um, carcinogen level 2B means there may be potential in some dosage for harm. However, you have to understand the dose makes the poison. Do you want to know what else is in carcinogen class level 2B? Brace oh. yourself for it. Oh, Coffee. Oh, oh because no. the acrylamide that's accumulated during the roasting process. So yes. Never mind, so never mind the caramel. And I mean, the food babe went on this whole thing that there are, there's not only caramel uh, caramel color 2B and there's two doses. Oh my God, the horror. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's and it's in two doses and there's a toxic dose of sugar. And she uses they all all of these people that are in the kind of woo woo class of of charlatans talk about things having toxins. I'm like, you have to define what a toxin is and you have to not use these scare tactics to get people to not only not buy a product, but to get them to use your product. Right, so and you're, you're a toxicology chemist, so I mean, yeah. you would know. Uh, and I, I want to get back to uh, Vani Hari here in just a second, the food babe. But, uh, but you mentioned, the, you know, I know she's using the free market, blah, 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 but you didn't sound too excited about the free market. Now, you, you, see, you told me you secretly lean a little bit towards the side of libertarianism. I mean, now, does, that that, that uh, does that mean that you have a shrine to Penn Gillette somewhere, or does that mean you just happen to actually understand economics? Oh, it's, I don't just have a shrine to Penn Gillette. He's a personal friend of mine. Oh, Oh yeah, we're we're buddies. Actually, whenever I'm in Vegas, I get to do the show for free. We're friends. Um, but, oh yeah, it's uh, anytime. If you're ever in Vegas, I'll introduce you guys. Um, but yeah, um, I, uh, I I I'm a registered libertarian. I I tend to lean a little um, a little to the left from there. Um, I'm, I'm I don't um, on on the science babe on my site itself. We stay pretty far away from politics. Um, yeah, you, you originally were kind of like I don't know if I want to share your article, Mister Libertarian uh, Guy. It's like oh shush you. Um, <laughs> it's, I, and I mean I grew up. Um, it was funny for I, I guess I'll go a little bit into politics. I grew up in a house with a um, 
with a father who was a Republican, a mother who was a registered independent. Um, and I, I think like when I was younger, just because you kind of are what your parents are. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I was just, I was a Republican because that's what my parents were then in college because everyone was a, I was, I was in college in Boston. I was a liberal cause that's what you were. And then, uh, venturing out into the world a bit. Um, I worked on a couple of po- political campaigns, and then after watching everyone break every single promise <laughs> they ever made, I was like, that's it. Everyone, once they get into office, um, never uh, holds up to what they say they're going to do. So that's kind of how I've landed at libertarianism. Um, yeah. It's it's not so much that I'm uh, bound to being a Rand Paul or um, an Ayn Rand, even though I'm a very big fan of Ayn Rand. I'm not very bound to the ideology so much as I... Um, I, I think that no matter what, when someone gets into office, they're not going to hold their promises. And I really um, want to try to keep uh, politicians bound to what they say. And I, I believe, and I'm a big fan of uh, liberty, is what it comes down to. Cool. So. Well, I, I mean, our listeners are going to like that, even though they may still want to kill you for trying to take oh, away. I know their, because their, well, their I, that's movie. why I appeared with my new puppy. Oh, it's like, yeah. <laughs> you can't not love a new puppy. <laughs> All right, so let's keep moving. I want to talk yeah. about the food game for the food babes. You know, she says that GMO foods are dangerous. Why is it's, she wrong? It's, well, she's wrong partially because we have evidence. I mean, I, I think that some people, when they get um, into their uh, into their sales taxes and they get into their stances, they say, no matter what you you say, you can't convince me that you're wrong. Um, and we had, there was a great article that came out in Forbes uh, not that long ago saying, we have a trillion meal stack of evidence saying that GMOs are safe. There's, there's nothing whatsoever. Um, linking GMOs to any type of harm, any type of damage to people. Mm-hmm. Um, pardon me. Um, but we've got, a, and I'll admit it, a couple years ago I got very, very sick. Um, and it's I, I went on the, the same uh, kind of, I guess, journey to try to figure out if there was something in the food supply <laughs> that was making me sicker. Um, it's, I, I guess I got a little personal. I got a, a very bad headache on one side of my head that never went away. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's that's, that's kind of a horrifying thing to have happen, to get the worst headache of your life and have it not go away. Um, and as I went through the whole, you know, I went vegan. Um, I tried cutting out every type of, I went on every type of diet that everyone ever recommended. Um, I mean, I, in the process, I lost 90 pounds. I went very conscientious of my health. Um, and I know at, at first when you shared my website with some of your viewers, people were like, we're sticking with the food, babe. She's anti-health. I'm like, that's, that's the furthest thing from, uh, from, from how I, uh, from how I work. I'm very pro health. I'm just against using pseudoscience to get to there. But I mean, I went through cutting, trying to cut out GMOs cause I, I almost bought into that myself. And then I looked at the science and saw that it was sound. Um, GMOs, sorry, you look like you're about to ask. Well, yeah, I was going to say, did you find out what was wrong? Um, yeah, it's a trigeminal nerve disorder. Um, it's just, um, occasionally something goes wrong uh, with your trigeminal nerve. It's, um, and it's an idiopathic type of pain that just needs to be treated with, um, I, I'm going to go for a very basic answer, but with science, um, but with, um, with a, um, uh, sorry, with, a, um, I'm very good at stuttering sometimes, huh. but with a nerve pain, um, type of medication with an anti-seizure med. Now, you know that the food babe, the reason that she got all into the anti-GMO stuff was because yeah. she, she had appendicitis. Um, and I mean, it's that just happens sometimes. I mean, things go wrong with our health. And I mean, I, I like to say we see different things wrong with our health now than we would have seen 50, 100 years ago because we're able to cure a lot of the really easy and basic things. Like during the Civil War, the number one cause of death wasn't gunshot wounds. It going, was going to the hospital. <laughs> exactly. No, the, the number one cause of, of death was, uh, I, I think the top causes of death were opportunistic infections and right. diarrhea. Right. Now people don't die of that in the first world anymore. They, uh, they, die of, they die of cancer because they live to be old enough to get cancer. Yeah. They live to be old enough to get immune system yeah. issues. So the 1860s was a really bad time to go camping in the United States. <laughs> um, camping was what we called having a house then. <laughs> yeah. Right, exactly. All right, so, so, um, so I, I, mean, want, so, I do look at uh, at her tactics and how she she frames, you know, we're sick and we're and we're getting sicker, and it's like, no, we're not sick and getting sicker, and it's I think it's a very um, pessimistic view. Mm-hmm. Of, of the world, and it's a very pessimistic view of the healthcare system. I'm, I, I think part of my libertarianism is that I'm an optimist. I think that people um, people use, I guess, their free will and their liberty to do good things. Um, and I think that, sorry, you look like you're... You know, no, I was going to say, you know, uh, Michael Shermer, I'm sure you're familiar with him, he talks about this thing that conspiracy theorists like to do. Uh, it's this type of thinking, it's called patternicity. 
And you know, patternicity is basically where uh, you see a whole bunch of M and M's thrown out on the floor, and it looks like a picture. It looks like a face, or you see a cloud, for example, and the cloud looks like a face. Looks like Jesus. Like, yeah, or it something. looks like Jesus. Or you see Jesus on cheese cheese toast or something like That's, that. And, oh yeah, there was, there was the cheese sandwich episode of, of Penn and Teller's uh, show. I've seen every episode. I showed to everybody I know. And yeah, Penn my, gave me half the season, so yeah, it's. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, no, it's it's. You know, I, I'll tell you. Like, we'll get into this later. But like, what I'm trying to do with the site is to create a place for libertarians who are skeptical minded, not conspiracy minded, to kind of have a place to go because it's been so dominated for so long by the people who are like, you know, like nine eleven was an inside job and like kind of the crazy stuff. But anyways, we'll talk about that. Let's get back to the issues real quick. Absolutely. And then, and then we'll keep moving on. Um, you know, for decades, for decades, we were told that saturated fat is bad for us, right? And we know now that the government was giving us these food recommendations based on flawed science, right? They were giving this food guide pyramid telling us, you know, you need to eat like 12 servings of grains a day, right? And, you know, we find out now that it's it's not really the, you know, the fats, saturated fats and butter and, and meat and things like that that are animal fats that are making us fat. It's sugars and carbohydrates. Absolutely. I mean, so do, uh, my question is, do you think that governments are incompetent when it comes to prescribing health guides for people? It's and I, again, I always like to I, I always like to preface things with I am not a nutritionist. I'm not a registered dietitian. I, I don't like to give out um, health advice before saying please seek a doctor's or a dietitian's advice. Um, I think that any time you get um, your advice from someone other than a doctor on this stuff or someone who's studied this for a long time, mm -hmm. you might not be getting the best advice. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, like I'm not sure, uh, I, I'm not sure where the advice was coming from um, earlier. We didn't always know the best advice in the 50s and 60s. Um, but at the same time, the more and more studies come out, uh, the more we know um, your best way to get your vitamins for the day is from eating plants. Mm -hmm. um, it's we we're getting uh, more uh, showing that a healthier diet is based on you know small uh, um, small servings of of protein coming from from fish and from lean cuts of meat. Um, and you know you're better off getting fat from from uh, butter or coconut oil than you are from margarine. My dog's rolling over here. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, at one point we thought that saturated fat, as you said, was the um, what was the devil. And people who were giving the same advice now, saying eat coconut oil, were once upon a time saying don't eat coconut oil because it had um, it, it was saturated fat. Um, and they were saying please have these liquid fats um, from canola oil. Um, and we now know that really wasn't the case. Um, and I mean, I have, I, I don't have the only, um, at the moment, my kitchen really has nothing uh, processed. It's all, it, it's pretty much all um, stuff that I keep in mason jars that's, um, that, that's I, I'm stocked to the teeth right now on, on quinoa um, vegetables. And, and um, I, I think I have, um, oh God, this is horrible. I have um, organic, um, like three colors of popcorn um, that I, that I um, will be having with, with melted um coconut oil on it later. Now, no, well now you're eating or organics. I mean, does that I mean, do you are you specifically seeking out organic foods? Nope. Uh, I just I just like the triple colors of popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> I have that in not organic. They actually don't sell um, genetically modified popcorn because they can't get it to pop. Hmm. Interesting. Not uh, not sure what the science is on that. Most um, um, commercially eaten uh, sweet corn in this country. From what I've read, I could be mixing this up. I apologize. Uh, I apologize if I am. Most uh, sweet corn is not genetically modified. Mm. Uh, that's eaten uh, uh, by people. It's. I think it's used. The genetically modified stuff is mostly eaten by um, cattle and things like that. Yeah, right. Yeah. For cattle feed. All right. So I want to ask you because you know uh, my question. My last question. You know, is about the food guide pyramid. How you know how science you know can sometimes make mistakes on what it thinks about you know making recommendations for people. Uh, yeah. But a lot of times, you know, what happens is that government policy, you know, will change to reflect what they call scientific consensus, right? So my, so my next question is, is how do you feel about the science of climate change and whether or not uh, we should be centralizing our economy into the hands of Washington, D.C. based on the consensus of climate change? Well, there was a great, uh, there's a great book called The Kindly Inquisitors uh, by Jonathan Rauch, and I believe uh, Penn Jillette is reading the audio book. Uh, version of this. I also recommend uh, Penn's um, Penn Sunday School for a podcast. Um, and not that I'm shilling for that or anything. Shill, shill. Shill. Um, I was on an episode of it a while ago. Um, mm -hmm. But moving on, it's um, there's there was a comment by Jonathan Rauch that said everything um, that we want to do that's going to combat climate change 
are things that that we're going to be doing that are good for the economy anyway. Like we're already trying. Sorry, my dog's wiggling. Um, I just got my dog two and a half weeks ago. Yeah, we're I very, see. Fun very anyway. close. <laughs> um, everything that we want to do um, that's going to be good for the economy, cleaner energy, um, uh, getting solar energy. That's that's going to be helping us out. Um, those are things that are going to be economically driven in the first place. Now, I mean, uh, climate change by by and large, is a huge consensus of science uh, to begin with. Um, so, I mean, I, I would like to see you know, some regulations in place to get cleaner um, cleaner cars and whatnot. But at the same time, I think that people are just going to buy them because they don't want to um, they they don't want to buy um, a less. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Um, it's they they don't want to buy cars that that take up that only get five miles per gallon of fuel. People want to save the money, mm -hmm. so I you know I believe in the free market and I believe that people are going to make smarter decisions on that anyway. I agree. So, I agree. So, that's my that's my that's pretty much my view on this. Also, you know, I I actually I've been reading a lot of Michael Shermer's thoughts about this. You know, he changed his mind. You know, he used to be sort yep. of a, uh, more skeptical about it. <clears throat> My problem, I'm very skeptical of the people who push it on us, though, because their their um, tactics usually involve raising taxes on people and uh, engaging in methods that I just don't think happen to actually you know address the real problems. I I uh, liken it to kind of people who want to put a soda tax on sugary sodas. It's like that doesn't change behavior, and the people it changes uh, behavior on. Are people who really don't have the money, uh, either don't have the money right. to begin, with or are just going to spend the money anyway? Well, like it's like it's like Leonardo DiCaprio who flies a private jet to go to the climate change rally, and then he tells everybody we need to cut back on consumption. Well, screw you, buddy. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, all the poor people need to cut back on consumption. You know, but that, that really that kind of bothers me. And I mean, I'm I'm in a I'm not I'm not rich. I'm not poor. I'm in a comfortable enough income class. But if you start taxing someone like me. Um, who you know just I finished paying off my student loans in um, by by not doing anything fun for my late twenties. Yeah. Um, I'm suddenly not going to be able to do anything fun. Um, you know, for my years, <laughs> you know, when I when I finally have everything paid off, I was very fiscally responsible in my late twenties, so that I could start doing some fun things with it. So I mean, I'm I'm against taxing. I'm I think I think I'm for doing um, you know promoting a, a more um, you know fisc. Uh, more responsible behavior with how uh, companies, um, I, I guess, set out to, to to create their products, and I think that that the market is going to do that in the future because it has. I mean, we're we're seeing uh, companies make. Um, make I, I don't want to say I hate using the term green products, but we're seeing companies make solar products. We're seeing uh, wind. Um, well, we see Tesla. You know, Elon Musk. You know, great libertarian who is pioneering these um, very. You know, free market. You know, green. Um, you know, energy solutions. So, yeah. so that that to me is always the way to go to look at people like that. But I, I'd like to move on to another topic. Um, yeah, this is big news right now. You know, many of the problems with the Ebola outbreak in oh. Liberia, it's associated with the fact that the people in Liberia adhere to religious traditions that require them to come into contact with the bodies. <gasps> Do you think that superstition kills? Yes, I, I don't. Have, I, I mean, that's just a short answer for it. But I mean, I think that if they had, if they had the economic capability to modernize, mm -hmm. um, and if they uh, got rid of their superstitions, they would be in much in a much better position. Um, there's, um, I mean, number one, it's horrible what they've gone through, um, and I, I, I feel horrible what uh, about the loss of life. Um, but number two, if they, um, I, I think there was, I forget where this quote's from, but any sufficiently advanced um, technology um, will be mistaken for magic. So if right. they, if they were able to modernize, they would look at what, um, at the help that's been offered to them, and they would say, okay, this is, this is just a new advance in technology. We can accept it. But I, I've heard rumors and I've seen articles um, that they've looked at this and gone, okay, this is trying to poison us. They haven't looked at it as help. And I really right. wish that wasn't the case. Like they're blaming the people who come in to help them, like the World Health Organization in different places. They're blaming those people on actually bringing the virus in, you know. Yes. And then there, there was like this institute, uh, there was a compound and like people raided the compound oh, from something like stole a bloody mattress for some reason and ran out with it. Just like wildly crazy stuff. And like, you know, as a libertarian, you know, I'm always trying to find like the most you know, pro-liberty, pro-individual liberty, you know, policy for things. But like, you know, there's something like Ebola, you know, it makes you sit there and think, well, you know, what about quarantine policies and things but, like that? Yeah. You know? But the way I look at this, and it's kind of, when it comes to public health, I, I kind of use the old adage of your, um, 
your right to swing your fist ends at my face. And this apply that to public health. I really don't want you coughing your Ebola fist at my face. Agreed. Agreed. That's actually that's actually like um, you know a big problem with what we call the non-aggression principle in libertarianism, where it's you know what is considered aggression. You know, is if you mm -hmm. cough your Ebola on someone, you know, you can't really say, oh well, you owe me recompensation, and you know who's going to be able to work that out. So. You know, there, there is a really important, you know, part of uh, public health that libertarians need to sort of address. But um, let me ask you um, one thing that one thing really worries me uh, personally is how much we're dr we're drugging our children. You know, kind of we're diagnosing everybody with ADHD, right? You know, and conspiracy theorists will kind of say this is a conspiracy by big pharma to, pro to get profits and stuff. But I mean, I worry about all of these kids that we're giving these powerful medicines. You know, we've, we've evolved over hundreds of thousands of years and got to the zenith of civilization without drugging all of our children in such a way and prescribing everybody with some mental illness. There was some test that they did in, in California. I can't remember uh, what the name of the test was, but they basically sent out people to uh, like psych, psych, psychological institutions and said, well, just tell them that, you know, be perfectly normal, except say that you hear the word thud in your head and see how many of them were diagnosed as crazy. They diagnosed them all as crazy, even though they were totally normal. And so I, I guess I worry about all these people drugging. I'm sort of on the conspiracy theory side on this one, not that there's a plot or anything like that, but I, I worry about drugging all of these kids. What do you think about this issue? Well, I understand what you're saying, and I've read articles say, seeing the long-term um, effects on they, – they haven't they, – they have not been able to see long-term effects of putting these medications into children because, I mean, they've only now started to do it. But at the same time, um, it, it's – I, I want to say I trust doctors to not over-medicate and put the right dosage, smaller dosages of these medications into children. Um, and I want to say I trust parents to not bring their, do their children to a doctor unless there's a legitimate problem. Um, because I, I really want to say, buddy down, um, it's, I really want to say a parent wouldn't bring their, their child to a doctor if it's not just, well, he's a little hyper sometime versus... Dude, the kid is is at the point where he's he's unable to control himself when he wants to. Because I, I I have um I, I have a cousin who's um who you know would love to be able to control herself, but just cannot sit still. Mm -hmm. um, and you know the ADHD meds make all the difference in the world. Um, but I mean there are countries who medicate less. Um, and there is I don't, there is an, some anecdotal evidence that food dyes uh, it's being taken out of the diet do make a difference. So like I said, some anecdotal evidence. Um, and some parents, when they remove food dyes from the diet, have seen a lot of difference. Um, so, I mean, you know what, if that works for you, if you see that your child is hyperactive, try looking at, at labels and taking it out. You know, it's, it's personal responsibility and looking at, what's, uh, at what you're feeding your child. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's, I know that I, I look, look at this and go, you know, in the 50s, we didn't have this problem with our, our children. Um, why don't we see what we're feeding our kid and see if there's if there's a difference? You, it's on the parent to say, okay, I can I can just give my kid uh, vegetables and say I'm not going to give them uh, all the processed junk that has food dyes. Mm -hmm. So that's there. There has been that correlation seen in anecdotes. I don't know if they've done a long term study on it or not. As for the medications. Um, I, I think that if a child does have, um, a, an illness like that, and there, there is that scene sometimes, you know, bring them to a psychologist, have them buddy down, uh, new puppy tear problems, yeah. <laughs> perfectionist. So, he's, all right, well, he's, since, since, since he's just having, very, all right, well, since you're having, very attached. yeah, I know, well, since you're having yeah, fun, this is the last just, question, and, and, uh, we'll, we'll kind of wrap this up here, but we'll talk about something fun anyway. Now, when I posted something from you on the Libertarian Republic, a lot of my fans got angry with you. Oh, yeah, I know. And they're, they're mad at me, too, right now, because I posted something bashing Alex Jones and conspiracy theorists earlier, uh, so they're very angry with me. Um, oh. And I am a shill for the lizard people. Of but um, of I, Do you think a lot of libertarians are... Lizard people are my friends. I'm just kidding. I know, I know. Do you think a lot of libertarians are just kind of nuts? Oh, but that, but I they're my nuts. I like. I know, right? And that's the thing is, like, whenever they meet me in person, they're always kind of like, "Oh, you're actually not so bad." But then they see you post. Some, I've seen me post something from like you know, like from you or Michael Shermer or whatever, and they're like, you know, like they get so angry. 
It is so much easier to yell at someone online. I've gotten, I've been told I'm worse than Hitler because he killed 12 million Jews. I deleted a couple of comments from anti-vaxxers. Right. <laughs> I'm way worse than Hitler. Oh, you are worse than Hitler. That's for worse sure. Worse than Hitler. It's, I'm like, I've been Godwin. Yes, I've made it as an internet personality. You have. You totally have. So, so, I mean, here's my thing. You know, we've got to get the message out. I'm trying, what I'm specifically trying to expand our sphere of influence. And you know, one of the things, one of the problems that I'm running into is that I think most people are kind of dumb. And since we're on the more science side of things, you know, it's it's hard to kind of arrive at scientific conclusions where you have to look at lots of evidence and read boring studies and all that kind of stuff. And so the marketplace is such that it's like if you're a conspiracy theorist and you're willing to say that 9-11 was an inside job and that vaccines cause autism, you'll have a whole huge audience of ready-made credulous idiots ready to believe everything you say. If you're trying to educate people about what's really going on with science and you're skeptical and maybe and you know things uh, skeptical of things like um, you know vac uh, you know anti-vaxxers and all that kind of stuff. Well then you have to it's like you're working uphill. Why do you think that is? And do you think that there's any hope for us of, of you know sort of like the minority against the majority of the hordes of like cretins? I understand what you're saying. Now, first of all, I, I, you said you know, people aren't smart, or I'm not sure. I forgot what the comment was at first. I think people are smart, and people are people are scared, and people are vulnerable. Mm -hmm. uh, when oh, buddy, don't give him. I know, buddy wanted to give you. Some <laughs> uh, first of all, it helps to be a cute blonde girl with a puppy. That uh, um, does right, right. People, oh yeah, um, people are are scared and vulnerable. Um, because there's this whole big world of information out there, um, and it helps to be a voice that says. You're, you know, you're not stupid for not understanding all of this. Um, it is not your fault that this person gave you this piece of information that you didn't understand um, and told you that vaccines cause autism or that um, GMOs are out to poison you or, or, some, you know, or that 9-11 was an inside job. It is not your fault that you were told this piece of information. It is, it, it's, but here's the truth. Uh -huh. Because you know, I'm I'm a scientist at this pesticide company, and I've never gotten sick because of the pesticides. Mm -hmm. um, it's I eat conventionally grown produce. Here's here's the truth, and it's not your fault that somebody told you this lie. Um, I never blame the victim when they believe something like this because Good point. you know. They're not, um, it, it's not their fault. Good it's point. It's not their fault. It's, it's just never tell them that they're stupid for that. Because wow. I'm, well, they're going to love you for that and the puppy and the cute blonde. Wow. You get you <laughs> win on all fronts tonight. I'm the bad guy. I've only been up for about six weeks and I have about 6,000 followers. All right. Well, you're going to have maybe a couple hundred extra ones after we get this show up. And I, like I said, I'm not the enemy. I, I, I eat my own product. Um, and and I'm and I have a really cute dog. Um, if you look for if you search hashtag science dog, there are lots of cute pictures of Buddy. We're having a really good time. Awesome. Well, where can we find out more information if we want to follow you? But oh, um, well, I'm on Twitter at just at science babe and Facebook. Uh, it's I'm on Facebook at just facebook.com slash science babe. Um, I really hope you come join me. And thank you so much for having me on. I had a good time. Yeah, me too. I had to have a great night. Thank you. You too.